Good evening. I would order this May 1st meeting of the Winston-Salem City Council and ask the City Secretary to call the roll, please. Councilmember Larson. Here. Councilmember Clark. Here. Councilmember Bessie. Here. Councilmember Montgomery. Here. Councilmember Burke. Here. Councilmember Adams. Here. Councilmember McIntosh. Here. Councilmember Taylor. Present. Thank you very much. And would you please join the City Council and me in a moment of silence? Thank you. Would you join the City Council and me in the Pledge of Allegiance? <clears throat> Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Thank you. Our Sergeant in Arms tonight is Lieutenant Renee Melly. Thank you, Lieutenant, for being with us tonight. Uh, let's begin with our honorariums. I uh, have item H1. Whereas our city's continuing efforts to address critical issues of safety, energy efficiency, and resilience in the built environment that affect our citizens both in everyday life and in times of natural disaster give us confidence that our structures are safe and sound. And whereas our confidence is achieved through the devotion of vigilant guardians, building safety and fire prevention officials, architects, engineers, builders, tradespeople, laborers, and others in the construction industry who work year-round to ensure the safe construction of buildings. And whereas these guardians, dedicated members of the International Code Council, use a governmental consensus process that brings together local, state, and federal officials with the expertise in the built environment to create, implement the highest quality codes to protect Americans in the buildings where we live, learn, work, worship and play and whereas the international codes the most widely adopted building safety energy and fire prevention codes in the nation are used by most u.s cities counties and states these modern building codes also include safeguards to protect the public from natural disasters such as hurricanes snowstorms tornadoes wildland fires and earthquakes and whereas building codes driving growth through innovation resilience and safety the theme for Building Safety Month 2017 encourages all Americans to raise awareness of the importance of building safety, energy efficiency, resilience, construction, and to be mindful of fire prevention, disaster mitigation, and backyard safety, and to recognize that countless lives have been saved due to implementation of safety codes by local and state agencies. And whereas Building Safety Month is a time when Americans are asked to consider projects to improve building safety and sustainability at home and in the community, and to acknowledge the essential service provided to all of us by local and state building departments, fire prevention bureaus, and federal agencies in protecting lives and property. Now, therefore, I, Alan Joins, <laughs> Mayor of the City of Winston-Salem, North, Carol North Carolina, do hereby proclaim May 2017 Building Safety Month in Winston-Salem, and I encourage our citizens to join their communities to participate in Building Safety Month activities given under my hand and seal this first day of May 2017. So moved. Thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Uh, tonight we have with us uh, Dan Dockery, the chief building official for the city of Winston-Salem, and I believe representatives of the Home Builders Association and other contractors. So, uh, Dan. Dan, on behalf of the City Council, we, we thank you and your colleagues for uh, bringing uh, this to us every year and to uh, help us to remind uh, the folks the importance of how far we've come really in the building codes and the building standards that we're doing today and the fire protections that were there. So thank you for, uh, for um, keeping us aware of that and uh, present this to you. Thank you. Like to comment. Good. It is quite an honor to serve citizens of Winston-Salem and Forsyth County and we cherish your support we relish the opportunity to go out and make contact with the community and do things to promote that safety in the built environment we look forward to being able to help more in the future to continue in the job we do I also want to say a couple quick things if you look at the brand new ICC building safety month video that came out today the first slide in there 
is actually of this body at Building Safety Month last year. We are making an impact and we're being recognized for it. It's a wonderful thing. I want to send Lee Riddle's um, um, comments. He unfortunately sighed a sigh of relief when the rain quit last week this afternoon had him mm -hmm. gasping for breath again mm -hmm. in Clemens on a job site he is unable to make it and represent the Home Builder Association but I want to thank Chris Murphy deputy of Planning Development Services and Angie um, our right arm in the fire services and also I want to take this time to congratulate Angie who has recently been named deputy fire marshal yes, and we look forward to Thank you all very much. Item H2. Resolution declaring Historic Preservation Month in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, May 2017. Whereas the city of Winston-Salem joins cities and counties across the United States in a nationwide celebration of Historic Preservation Month. And whereas historic preservation is an effective tool for economic development, tourism promotion, revitalizing neighborhoods, fostering local pride, and maintaining community character while enhancing livability. And whereas historic preservation is relevant for all communities across the nation, both urban and rural, and for all neighborhoods and citizens all over the city of Winston-Salem, and whereas it is important to celebrate the role of history in our lives and the contributions made by dedicated individuals in helping to preserve the tangible aspects of the heritage that has shaped us as a people, and whereas Historic Preservation Month is co-sponsored by the Forsyth County Historic Resources Commission, and other local preservation and neighborhood organizations throughout Forsyth County. Whereas these organizations encourage members of the community to participate in creative and fun events related to historic preservation as a way to celebrate, pre celebrate Preservation Month 2017. And whereas there are over 30 events scheduled in Forsyth County for citizens to attend. Now therefore be it resolved that the mayor and city council of the city of Winston-Salem do hereby declare the month of May 2017 as Historic Preservation Month and call upon the people of Winston-Salem to join their fellow citizens across the United States in recognizing and participating in this special observance. Be it further resolved that this resolution be spread upon the minutes of the City Council and that a copy be furnished to the Forsyth County Historic Resources Commission. Is there a motion? Move by approval. Second. Motion second. Discussion? All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That's unanimous. Uh, Councilmember Larson is going to present this. I uh, think Michelle McCullough, as well as our chairman of the Historic Resources Commission, Christina McManus. Good, all right. Good. 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 Wonderful. So, so obviously tonight is all about buildings. Uh, Dan, congratulations. And uh, hopefully some of your buildings will stick around long enough to be historic. Uh, this, my part of the program, deals with our past, but it really is more about the future of Winston-Salem. And this city has a long tradition of respecting its past. Uh, certainly Old Salem, uh, who, which is pretty well recognized nationally. I think this week they're going to be recognized with a national landmark designation. But we're very proud of the work that's been done not only at places like Old Salem, but in our neighborhoods, in our downtown, in the individual historic houses that are around in, in, this, in this city. And it's worthy of celebrating that and, come, and remembering what has been given to us from the past for us to steward and take on to the future and give to people that are coming after us. Thank you for all your work and everything that uh, you have done to help preserve the heritage of this, of this city. Thank you. Michelle, for yeah. Michelle, get in the Michelle, picture. Get, get, in the yes. picture. get the picture? press to take your picture. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Good. Um, good evening, Mayor, Mayor Portem, and council members. Good evening. 
My name is Kristen McManus, and I am a member of the Forsyth County Historic Resources Commission. On behalf of the commission, I'd like to thank you for all your support and assistance this past year. Previous to this meeting, you should have received the 2016 HRC annual report. As you could see, the commission has been very busy. Just to mention a couple of activities, there were two historic marker unveilings, one at the Winston Mutual Life Insurance Building and one in remembrance of the five row community at Ronaldo. You should have also received the calendar of events for May Historic Preservation Month. The HRC will be hosting both a city and county marker unveiling this month. The city unveiling will be on May 20th and it will be to celebrate the Brother Springs and African School in the Happy Hill neighborhood. Afterwards, Cheryl Harry, Director of African American Programming at Old Salem, will be giving a walking tour of the Happy Hill neighborhood. Also this month, we are encouraging people to get out and walk, so there are, so there are many walking tours on the calendar. The HRC will sponsor a downtown tour on May 25th at noon. And if you're not interested in walking, there are two trolley tours, one hosted by Preservation Forsyth in Old Salem, and one by the Black Historic Archives and the HRC. Feel free to call HRC staff, that would be Michelle, for more information on any of the events. Once again, thank you for, from everyone at the HRC. We look forward to another year working to save the architectural history of Winston-Salem. Thank you very much. And just briefly, you should hopefully have all gotten invitations from Old Salem. We're hosting an event with the National Park Service, Gazangas, the plaque for the new and expanded National Historic Landmark District, which is now going to be almost 200 acres in size, stretching from Happy Hill, archaeological resources, all the way up north to First Street. So it'll be hopefully a good event. We hope so council members can attend and the mayor if he was available. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Adams? <clears throat> yes, thank you, Mayor, members of the council. I uh, just want to thank you all for your volunteerism to the county and the city of Winston-Salem. I uh, want to thank Michelle McCullough for all the hard work you're doing to try to bring some other pieces to our history in the city to the forefront. Uh, I would ask that the council and others, if you haven't seen or got anything on the trolley tour, you might want to do that. Uh, they're going to do it through the African American community. And, and that's going to account to the mayor pro tem, who's been for years an advocate for that. Uh, as a matter of fact, I got a piece of literature about a couple of weeks ago that listed uh, an African American tour through East Winston uh, had to be at least 20 plus years ago. Uh, and I remember that they marked the sidewalks in the, on Martin Luther King and Fifth Street to show people which way to go, like to Delta Fine Arts and some other places. So all I can say is that please continue the work that you're doing as a commission. We need you. And at times it may seem like we, we're not too happy with some of the things you do. It's only because we want the world to know about the complete history of Winston-Salem, Forsyth County. And we know it's history out there and we look to you to help us get there with it. Again, on behalf of the members of the council and the mayor and the mayor pro tem, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilor Brown. All right, we'll now go to the uh, zoning agenda. Uh, uh, Council Member Burke. I wanted to say <laughs> Sorry about that. Go right ahead. Did it slip you? Yeah. It did. All right. <laughs> yeah, it's electronic stuff here. It's very nice. I wanted to say that how much I appreciate it. And Ms. McCullough, no, I've been her number one cheerleader and her encourager because I know that we can do things in this city and we can make the public aware, not only our citizens, but um, tough on tourism. And when we have people coming to visit, when we have a nice outline to show them, it makes them want to come to our city and enjoy it. So again, I agree with the Councilwoman Adams. We thank you sincerely, all of you and our volunteers, thank you. Thank you, Councilman Burke. All right, we'll now go to the zoning agenda, which is comprised of the following items. We have two rezoning petitions, two uni unified development ordinance amendments, an area plan update, an item concerning a street closing, and an item regarding a tax reappraisal process. 
the rezoning petitions, the unified development ordinance amendments, and the area plan update, as well as the street closing, are listed as public hearings. And when these public hearings are called, the person in the council chamber will be given an opportunity to speak. If there is opposition to the zoning petitions, the proponents and opponents will each be given 15 minutes for presentation and then three minutes for rebuttal. If no one wishes to speak, I'll close the public hearings and the city council will consider the item. We're televising the meeting live tonight on TV 13, and it will be replayed on Tuesday at 9 a.m. and again Wednesday at 9 p.m. Of course, copies of our agenda and videos of past meetings are always available online at the City of, Web city of Winston Salem website and just click on the watch meetings online option. May we have the first item, please. Item Z1, public hearing on zoning petition of Janet and Leonard Murray from RS9 to LB and LB to LBL. Property located on the northeast corner of Country Club Road and Bishop Street, located in the West Ward. Planning Board recommended approval of the petition. Is there anyone in the council chamber who's opposed to this rezoning? I know the petitioner is here for questions. Seeing no one, I declare the public hearing closed and recognize Councilman Clark. Yeah. Mr. Norby, if you'll give a two minute one in, be sure to include the fact that this petition was changed due to some concerns. So everybody kind of knows where we are. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, Council Members. Um, evening. You see the property here shown in yellow, and you see the existing zoning line that shows the LB boundary and the RS9 boundary basically cutting through the parking lot of that yellow lot. And so that's why this rezoning was brought in, was to bring the entire property into the same zoning uh, there. They originally proposed HB zoning, with a, with a variety of different uses. Uh, but during the initial discussion with the neighborhood and uh, initially being scheduled with the planning board, there were some concerns that arose about some of the uses that were allowed in HB, and so they then changed it to LBL. So that's limited business, special use, limited uh, with uh, some conditions uh, on that. This is the uh, aerial photo that shows basically the same thing. You see it's a uh, uh, Gordon Manor area is, is heavily surrounded by residential. These are some ground shots, the subject properties to the left there. And this mm. is part of the parking lot looking to the west uh, toward the residential. Um, and this is on Bishop Street, which uh, borders the property uh, on the west side. And so the site is to the left uh, on that. And then this is looking uh, east on Country Club, site is to the left. And this is right across Country Club, a house that had been converted to a office. Uh, the area plan, West Suburban area plan that was adopted uh, in 2012 shows that all for commercial. So this rezoning request is consistent with that. Uh, and the uh, LB district we believe is appropriate for this neighborhood scale activity center that's consistent with what you see in the surrounding area. And there was a condition that was offered there that retains the existing trees. You notice the, uh, uh, the uh, evergreen vegetation along the uh, western edge of that, and it would, this condition would re retain that, which is very important because of its border with the residential area. This revised version went on April 13th to the planning board. There's no opposition. The planning board recommended approval. Any questions for Mr. Norby? Thank you, Mr. Norby. Okay, you had a oh, question. Just around. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> on page four, where it gives the analysis of conformity to the plan and the planning issue, and it talks about the allowed usage of what GBL, which would have allowed the use of outdoor display, retail and motor vehicle repair and maintenance, and it you know states that those uses are no longer part of this rezoning request because of the possible potential negative impacts associated with placing these uses in close proximity to residential zoning. And maybe this goes back to what I guess I've been talking about now for a while. Considering the present situation of the continued growth of motor repair uh, in the urban core residential neighborhoods, how can or does this zoning process affect urban resident, other residential neighborhoods? Councilmember Adams, it Unfortunately, in a lot of places around the city, the typical uh, commercial zoning is not LB, limited business, but it is HB and in some cases GB. 
those districts allow a lot more variation in land uses there. This particular area uh, that was uh, originally rezoned was LB. There is not any HB around it. So it has had the good fortune of not having those uses introduced uh, to that. And that was part of the concern about going HB on this. Uh, but I would agree that LB is a more neighborhood friendly zoning district. And so if that, uh, that would probably applying that to other areas would then probably mean down zoning uh, some of those existing zoning areas to LB. But even so, those uses that would have been allowed in HB would be not grandfather, but they'd be legal non-conforming uses Correct. that as they age out and they change, they would have to conform, but they could continue in operation there. Uh, so that's, that's sort of the conundrum about the, uh, the, the zoning that we have in other areas. Uh, Attorney Carmen, is there anything that we can do going forward, again, to start looking at this? I know I've had Mr. Norby looking at this for a while, but uh, again, what we're seeing in the, in the urban core residential, we just, we're getting inundated. And again, I'm not against small business, but I think about what we're doing to our communities that, you know, we just keep allowing these businesses, which are hazardous type material type businesses that once they close, and if a restaurant or residential wants to go their building, they can't, they would have to, you know, remediate Brownfield and all of this stuff. So I'm wondering, just going forward, can we look at and maybe bring something to the council through one of the committees or something for information as to how can we address this for the city going forward? Because if we're growing downtown, but if we won't be able to grow the inner cities where all of these establishments are, because they're, yeah, they're poisoning the earth. I mean, the water, the earth, the soil. And uh, I just want it to be that we can uh, do some development in our neighborhoods eventually. So could you do that for us, please? Sure, I'd be happy to look at Thank it you. your report. Thank you. Mr. Frank Clark, if you're ready. Yeah, let me just, Paul, just confirm this. The building is already zoned LB. Yes. What they found out is part of the parking lot, which has probably been a parking lot for 50 years. Yeah. That's right. Is residential now. Correct. Why that happened in what was it, '64? I don't know. I was not on the council then. But uh, anyway, with that, I would like I like to move for approval of one the first statement of the first statement of consistency is set forth on the agenda and two W three three two three. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? If not, all favor the motion. Please say aye. 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 If opposed, no. That's unanimous. Item Z two. <laughs> Item Z2, public hearing on zoning petition of Wake Forest Baptist Medical Center, Medical Foundation of Bowman Gray School of Medicine, and North Carolina Baptist Hospital Incorporated, North Carolina Baptist Hospital, Wake Forest University Health Sciences, and North Carolina Baptist Hospitals from HB, RS9, and LO to C-L, property located on the south side of Cloverdale Avenue between Miller Street and Medical Center Boulevard, located in the southwest ward. Planning Board recommended approval of the petition. Is there anyone in the council chamber who is opposed to this rezoning? I know the petitioner is here for any questions. Seeing no one, I declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Bessie, I assume you'd like a little presentation on this one. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Norby, if you can summarize, please, uh, including uh, the revised conditions. Mr. Norby. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Um, you see the property shown here in yellow on the map. It is bounded on the north by Cloverdale and on the east by Medical Center Avenue. On the south by the back of the houses that front on uh, Queen Street and on the west by Miller Street. Uh, so there is another public right of way that goes uh, through there from uh, west to east. Uh, but it is uh, currently in three different zoning districts, uh, HB, uh, LO and just a little sliver of that lot over to the left, uh, the far left that spills into that RS9, but it is actually part of the track that is uh, in uh, that is on the other side of that red line. Uh, the uh, aerial photo obviously is a very urban area uh, dominated by the medical center and the commercial on the north side of Cloverdale and Ardmore neighborhood very prominently uh, to the south of the area in, uh, in yellow there. Uh, some ground shots, obviously the medical center, this is the subject property. 
uh, along Cloverdale and the little right of way that comes off of Cloverdale uh, there. And this is looking uh, to the west along Cloverdale up the hill. The site is to the left. Uh, Medical Center Boulevard looking up the hill. The site is to the right. And then this is looking uh, north on Miller Street. The site is to the right. So that's looking down toward uh, Cloverdale. Uh, and this is looking south on Miller Street toward the Ar Ardmore neighborhood. The site is immediately to the left of where the camera is. These are the homes along Queen Street. The site is actually behind the lots that those homes are on. Uh, the adopted Southwest Suburban Area Plan, which is adopted just a couple years ago, shows this area for institutional. And it also makes a number of uh, recommendations about this uh, particular site in here that the petitioners have tried to uh, honor in terms of the, uh, the conditions that they have offered. Uh, it is obviously adjacent to the main medical center, which is also zone campus. It's consistent, as you just saw, with the Southwest Winston-Salem area plan. Has good access to sidewalks, transit, and frontage along the thoroughfares. The uh, request would obviously help facilitate the redevelopment of the site and consolidate these multiple zonings into one lot. Uh, proposed conditions that came to the planning board included that the locations of the buildings uh, would be closer to Cloverdale and the parking would be uh, on the southern part of the site to minimize the visual impact of buildings that would be uh, on the site to the neighborhood. Uh, that there would be coordination with the city in terms of uh, redoing the Cloverdale streetscape consistent with the uh, study that had been done uh, by the city on that. Uh, there would be a condition to retain the mature, mature trees and vegetation along the southern border and that uh, a mandate that the primary access to the site as it gets developed would be from Cloverdale, only a secondary uh, ingress from uh, Miller Street. Uh, when this went to the planning board on April 13th, there was one resident of uh, Ardmore neighborhood that spoke about concern about uh, the potential of the limited campus uses. And that is a feature in the UDO that allows uh, beyond the campus district itself for certain limited nature uses to be within 500 feet of the exterior boundary of it uh, if, if done under certain conditions. Uh, but that concern was expressed there. The planning board discussed the some of the options for addressing that, but they did recommend an approval. And then after the planning board, the petitioner proposed a number of additional conditions to address concerns about buffering, the limited campus uses, and helistops. So let me just summarize that, and the, this, uh, this final revised version is sitting at your places there. But uh, first, prior to issuance of grading permits, developer would retain the existing mature vegetation along the, uh, the uh, southern border, would provide a 30-foot non-disturbed area along the boundary of that lot that is at the southwestern uh, corner of the site, uh, and, uh, and with the exception of being able to remove existing uh, pavement that might be in that area. Uh, prior to issuance of building permits, there would be no parking located between the proposed buildings and the right-of-way of Cloverdale Avenue or Miller Street. In other words, the building would, buildings would be closer to Cloverdale. The parking would be on the southern part of the site. Uh, the developer would work with the city on the streetscape, as I mentioned before. Then in the next section, prior to uh, certificates of occupancy, the primary access would be from Cloverdale, only secondary from uh, Miller Street. Uh, the developer will provide a type 4 buffer along the southern property line. Uh, that's before the certificate of occupancy is, is uh, done. And then a 30-foot type 4 buffer would be provided along the boundary of that uh, lot to the southwestern corner. And then two final conditions uh, that came after the planning board. Developer would waive its rights to extend the limited campus uses associated with the hospital campus beyond the boundaries of this rezoning tract. So there were some fears that it would spread to the houses along Queen Street, uh, but the uh, petitioner has said there will be no uh, extension of that beyond the boundaries of what's being rezoned. So in other words, no possibility of limited campus uses along Queen Street or uh, Miller Street going, uh, going into the neighborhood. And then the final condition is there would not be a helistop 
allowed on this rezoning site. As you know, there is a hell of a stop on the main uh, uh, hospital campus there. So these are the revised conditions that, again, uh, address a number of uh, all the issues that were brought up uh, uh, from the neighborhood. Since we are at this point, I'm going to ask the petitioner if you would come forward and verbally uh, state your concurrence with these additional conditions, please, and state your name and address for the record, please. <clears throat> Doug Stemmel, 601 North Trade Street, Suite 200, Winston-Salem, here to represent Wake Forest Baptist Health, and we agree with the conditions and volunteered working with the neighborhood and Mr. Bessie on those. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Stemmel. Thank you. All right, Mr. Bessie. Uh, thank you. Um, <clears throat> uh, I move approval for number one, the first statement of consistency as set forth on the agenda, and two, W3326 with the revised conditions. Second. Motion second. second. Yep. You ready? All right. All in favor of the motion? Excuse me, Councilman Brooks. I had a question yes, that's indirectly. Uh, Mr. Uh, Norb, I want to understand what I'm going to ask you. That little section that's on Clover there, that's rough, where people use for a parking lot from first up toward heading toward Miller. What's proposed for that little area? Uh, let me back up. This, Councilmember Burke, you are referring to this little piece of street that comes off of Cloverdale and comes over to Medical Center? Yes, this rough looking little area. They use it for parking. Yes. Uh, they have not brought in any site plans for this yet, so we don't know exactly what's going to happen. It is possible they would have to petition to close this public right-of-way if they wanted to reclaim some of it, uh, or they could possibly use it for uh, parking uh, uh, with permission of the city to, uh, to, to go in there, but they have not finalized their plans for this area yet. And one of the conditions calls for them working with the city on the streetscape improvements here. So all of that will be part of that discussion. Thank you. All right. Councilman Larson. Uh, because it is Preservation Month, I thought it'd be worthy to draw attention to the fact that how important this has been, these, these um, decisions have been made by Wake Forest uh, Baptist uh, Medical to protect and preserve the houses, the historic houses that are along Queen Street. And, I, and, and obviously uh, Ardmore being one of our more significant uh, historic neighborhoods is going to benefit greatly from this compromise or from this concession, rather, that Wake Forest has made uh, to make sure that these houses, in fact, remain uh, residential. So I wanted, to, I wanted to pull that out and acknowledge and thank uh, the STEML and the, and the various staff people with the hospital that have made this compromise possible. Thank you very much. Very good. All right, all in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. That's unanimous. Thank you, Councilmember Bessie. Item Z3. Item Z3, public hearing and ordinance amending chapters B and C of the Unified Development Ordinances to reflect changes in state law for UDO 276, proposal of the City Attorney's Office recommended by the Planning Board. Before we do the public hearing, Paul, would you give us just a brief uh, summary of what this uh, UDO action uh, does? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. As you may or may not know, the UDO actually a very thick book. It contains four chapters, A definitions, B zoning, C environmental, and D subdivision. Where the, the changes we're dealing with tonight are in chapters B and C. Uh, and this is prompted by recent changes in state law. So the General Assembly has made these changes, so we're required to bring our local ordinances in compliance with that. And these particular changes involve boards of adjustment, uh, protest petitions and sedimentation erosion control enforcement uh, in terms of the variances uh, that are granted by Board of Adjustment there's a revision in the language concerning hardships which trigger a variance request and also what factors the Zoning Board of, uh, of Appeals uh, of Adjustment must consider in deciding on a variance and again this is keeping with the new language that was adopted by the General Assembly Concerning protest petitions, as you probably know, the General Assembly uh, removed protest petitions as a possibility uh, for cities across uh, North Carolina. And protest petitions, as you, as you know, triggered a supermajority council vote to approve a rezoning. So what is substituted in its place from that same legislation is 
the ability for residents or property owners to submit a quote unquote written statement to the council. And of course, you know, in practice right now, whenever people submit letters or petitions, uh, you get them anyway, but this is just codifying that, that, that they're allowed to do this as per the state statutes. Uh, under chapter C, environmental, there are a number of changes concerning uh, sedimentation, erosion control, how penalties are handled and all that. First of all, there's a requirement for a delivery of violation notices and offer of assistance to the uh, violator in terms of how to correct a violation. Uh, there would be a limitation on the civil penalty amounts if the violation is uh, corrected. Uh, there is some specification about how court action is initiated in the case of a violator that does not respond to the penalty. And then finally, there's, uh, uh, there's some clarification about how requests for remission of civil penalties are made to the Sedimentation Control Commission, and that's in the case of where the violator has resolved it and then they want to request remission of some or all of the civil penalties. Uh, these changes were reviewed at the planning board at their April 13th hearing. There was no opposition. The planning board recommended approval. Any questions, Mr. Norby? Thank you, Mr. Norby. Uh, this is a public hearing. Is there anyone in the council chamber who wishes to be heard on this proposed UDO text amendment? Seeing no one, I'll declare the public hearing closed and I would uh, entertain a motion. So I would uh, move approval. Second. Motion, second. Discussion? All in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed, no? That's unanimous. Thank you. Mayor, I, leave, uh, I hate to interrupt. Yes, okay. But, uh, can we use the formal motion? Uh, yes. Hear? Hang on a minute. <laughs> Folks, we have this. Everything's computerized now, so just give me a minute. <laughs> what did I go to? Statement of consistency? Correct. Mr. Mayor, I. Uh, uh, <laughs> You better bring it to me. I don't think that's it either. You may yeah. approach the dance count. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, but I've got different words here. Okay. I move for approval of one, the statement of consistency for approval as set forth on the agenda and two, UDO text amendment 276. Is there a second, second to that? Second. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. That is unanimous. Thank you. Yeah. Now we go to item Z4. Item Z4, public hearing and ordinance amending Chapter B of the Unified Development Ordinances to modify the menu of design options for large-scale retail developments to allow a payment in lieu for public art. UDO 278, Proposal of the Planning and Development Services, recommended by Planning Board. Paul, would you give us a brief synopsis of this proposed amendment? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is actually prompted by the fact that we now have a public art commission that has gotten busy and is working on a number of projects. And this actual ordinance for large-scale retail uh, was kind of a pioneer back in 2004 in encouraging public art. That was one of the options uh, here. So uh, the uh, standards were created when that was adopted in 2004 to enhance the overall appearance and function of big box buildings or sites by giving a menu of design options. The developer could choose from five of nine de uh, design options that involve a, a variety of different uh, aspects of the design of a site, but included in that menu was public art on the site. So under the ordinance as it's written now, the developer can either commission the public art themselves and install it, or work with a local arts organization to commission the public art and install it on the site. This proposed amendment would, al would also allow the developer as an option to uh, do payment in lieu for use by the uh, Public Art Commission. Uh, so uh, there was no Public Art Commission, obviously, back in 2004, uh, and there was no mechanism really in place for doing that. But now that we have that, this provides some flexibility, and particularly in cases where sites might be less visible or they might be out of the, you know, beyond the, the easy view of the uh, traveling uh, public on a, on a main road. And so this payment in lieu gives the option of placing that public art perhaps somewhere in the vicinity of it, but in a more uh, visible location that's not on the site itself. So being able to uh, uh, commission that for the use of the uh, Public Art Commission can be a benefit to the public in, in that case. 
This went on April 13th to the planning board for public hearing. There was no opposition. The planning board recommended approval. Any questions from Mr. Norby on this one? Uh, Councilmember McIntosh. <clears throat> Paul, why would, why would a developer choose to do payment in lieu of? What would be the advantage to a developer? I'm, I'm assuming that the, there's no cost differential. Yeah, no, it, it, the amount is is specified in the ordinance is 1% of the, of the actual building cost. But in that case, the developer may choose not to just mess with uh, finding an artist themselves or uh, so outsource the process may may decide that the site it may, may like the option, but the site isn't as visible. Uh, it, it might from topography sake might not be as visible there, but might be part of a larger development that has some highly visible places uh, there. Some of it might be timing the developer may not uh, might be getting close to uh, wanting to get the project completed and isn't going to be able to get it installed in time. And so providing the payment in lieu and letting the Public Art Commission take care of it is it would be an advantage to the developer. Okay, so a developer could come in and build a project, pay the payment in lieu, end up without any public art on the site? Yes, but the idea would be to look for something in the, in the general area of where it is. And keep in mind, this typically large-scale retail is going to involve a number of buildings. So it may not be on the site that that actual building is that the, that the developer chooses this option, but it could be somewhere in that same general vicinity. Who makes the call on location? Is that up to staff or well, the Public Art Commission? The Public Art Commission would be looking uh, at getting the public art created and work with the staff to see, first of all, is there some public right-of-way that could be used that would be uh, uh, not pose a safety problem or whatever in, in putting it there, or may look at uh, the developer uh, that controls the other lots there and see if uh, see if someone wants it on that uh, property but they would they would work with the property that's available in that general area okay. is this based on other communities ordinances or is this something that we came up with ourselves well this is uh, I'll have to check to see what other cities I'm just do, wondering what the but track pay, record is payment in lieu we have worked with with other types of things like sidewalks right. and, and things like that and in this particular case there's a developer that's very interested in using this uh, that, that's local right now. So. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Paul, the uh, amount is calculated at 1% of the de total development cost. Of, how we of the actual building cost. The building itself. Yes. Okay. Because one Burke. Yes. I, uh, about the pay in lieu, but I have been one of the people who feel that public art is important, and we have branded ourselves as a city. We're very creative, and I believe Mr. Page and I, we went to Charlotte, and we looked at a lot of their public art and as we travel we've seen public art so I think this can be very encouraging and I think even you may not put it at the particular place but it will be in areas it will help make our total city I hope a much prettier place we do have a very lovely place already but it's going to be better with public art well, this is a public hearing is there anyone in the council chamber who wishes to be heard on this proposed UDO tax amendment Seeing no one, I'll declare the public hearing closed. And uh, Mr. Mayor, if, if the uh, try a motion. city attorney would bring me the I've envelope got it right here, I, oh, you've got it. I would entertain a motion <laughs> that uh, you approve the statement of consistency as set forth on the agenda and UDO text amendment 278. That's words I was going to use. So I'll make that motion. Second. second. Motion second. Any discussion? I need to ask a question Burke. about the Public Art Commission. How often do they meet, and what actually? How would they be monitoring what's going on with our public art? Uh, Councilmember Burke, they, I believe they meet once a month and actually more frequently when they have a project that they're trying to work on. They'll, they're accepting uh, proposals from artists, making decisions and all that. So they've, they put in quite a bit of uh, working time. But when they're given a project to work uh, with, in this case they've worked with the, uh, uh, the Central Library, and also the uh, convention center, uh, but this will be another project that they work on, and they, they uh, I, we've, we found them to be very uh, diligent in trying to pursue the projects that they have. I believe they will. At one time, we had the community appearance. How are they working together in any way, our community appearance with the public arts? If there is a 
a public art project that would be on a city property, they would need to coordinate with the Community Appearance uh, Commission on that. Or if it's, uh, uh, there be need, need to be some coordination if it was city funded as, as well. We have a motion and a second. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, no. That is unanimous. Thank you. Item Z5. Item Z5, public hearing on resolution adopting the proposed Northwest Winston-Salem area plan update recommended by Planning Board and the Community Development, Housing, and General Government Committee. I believe Mr. Kelly Bennett's going to make this presentation, and I would uh, recognize him at this time. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council. Uh, we began this process in the fall. Um, we've had four public meetings, uh, very well attended. Um, we had uh, overall attendance was approximately 75 people uh, with about 45 individuals coming to, to multiple meetings. Uh, planning board uh, recommended approval unanimously. This is the plan area. <coughs> Uh, it's a very stable area. You can see uh, it's bounded by Silas Creek Parkway, uh, Children's Home Property, uh, Northwest Boulevard, and Business 40. Um, and the proposed land use changes, um, you can see highlighted here. Uh, like I said, this is a very stable area, and uh, many of the recommendations are actually uh, areas that we thought would uh, be good mixed use areas, so we highlighted those here. Um, and one of those is uh, along Coliseum Drive. Um, this area has uh, a couple vacant office buildings and uh, an underused shopping center. And uh, we did a concept plan uh, looking at this as how this could be redeveloped into a mixed use area with uh, adding residential uses, including townhomes, um, reusing the Inmar building here as a commercial and office residential mixed use, um, adding uh, first floor retail, and even a supermarket. Um, there, there are other, other areas of recommended change, but understand you're on a timeline here and uh, I'm happy to answer any specific questions about different areas in the area area plan any questions for mr. Bennett on the plan mr. McIntosh you and mr. Clark are share of this area I think you were a little bit of mr. And, and Adams, mr. And yeah. Adams as well have some of that as well <laughs> any questions I got the I'll just a quick Mr. Clark. Yeah. Uh, it, it's me Charlie this is a fairly mature area I rarely have rezoning on my part of it because there's there's no vacant land the I think the ones that are really of interest are in Ms. Uh, Adams' ward. Uh, there is the children's home, which is kind of a big question mark. We're not sure what's going to happen there. Uh, but uh, for the most part, we do have a few little uh, urban, uh, commercial developed areas. But for the most part, as you can see in the map, it's all mostly yellow, which is single family. And you do have uh, two private golf courses in there. That's the dark green. And then you've got Renova House and Sika and... Um, Grayland are all in there as well. Very, very historic area. Yeah. Do y'all have questions or do you want to do the public hearing first? Oh, yeah. Okay. So. okay, this is a public hearing. Is there anyone in the council chamber who wishes to be heard on this proposed um, south um, uh, northwest area plan update? I see Miss Perkins here. She's got a, a nice, uh, nice uh, establishment there in this district. Yeah. So we're glad to have you here tonight. <laughs> All right, I'll close the public hearing and then I'll recognize Councilman McIntosh and then Councilman Adams. Uh, just a, a quick note, uh, we did have very good attendance at these and, um, and, and, and lots of involvement, and very good questions. And one of the areas that I think um, we're coming across more and more is the type of area where you have commercial transitioning to residential. Um, and one of the areas of concern was along First Street coming up First Street Hill towards Five Point and we had a lot of input there and hopefully we're going to be able to work with property owners to make some recommendations about what um, what the neighborhood would like to see realizing that, um, that, that the, uh, the we have property owners um, want to do something that, uh, that that turns a profit there so I thought the process worked really well I thought the uh, the input from people was was excellent uh, but as Mr. Clark said there's it's most of the area most of my ward uh, in here uh, has not had a lot of change come at it recently. Councilman Adams. 
Um, first of all, I'll talk about the one that's not in my ward, which is where the Enmar building sits, mm -hmm. Coliseum, uh, where the Wells Fargo and, and those sort types of things. Um, I think that would be an ideal place to do what the plan is saying uh, so far as mixed use a grocery store, some residential in the MR building. And I did make that comment to some others uh, in the city about that, that in order to spur commercial and residential from Coliseum right there to university, that area is gonna have to change. So I'm hoping that this plan uh, allows that to happen with some developers and other people, investors, to uh, redo the shopping center, but more importantly, the MR building. Because if you got residential in there and did some uh, commercial at the bottom, mixed use, it would bring other people to the neighborhood and the restaurant that's been vacant across the street for a decade now or more, uh, it would spur that. Also, uh, the children's home, I do know, or we know, that Paisley and Lawrence are building a new school joint project there, which backs up to the children's home property. Uh, the comments throughout the plan was, you know, it's the most valuable piece of land in the city, and it is, uh, not just for what it is, but the sites and the topography of it, because if you've ever been there and you go on top of the hill, the very top, that those are the best views in the whole city of Winston-Salem. So. I know the children's home, the, the intent they have now of serving, uh, providing resources for children from all different types of uh, uh, issues, whether it's health, education, counseling, and other things. Uh, it's just gonna be interesting as the time goes by uh, what happens over there with that. But thank you, and thank the people that volunteered that came and spoke on this behalf for the Northwest Wolf, thank Northwest you. Area Plan. I'd entertain a motion from one of the Three of you. Um, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> I can say anything I want. <laughs> uh, I move that we approve the acceptance of the uh, Northwest Area Plan update. Second. 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 Any discussion? All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, no. That is unanimous. Thank you. Now, item Z6. Item Z6 Public hearing on petition to close and abandon Van Buren Street, Stratford Green Court, and a portion of Stratford Green Lane located off of the South Alpha of South Stratford Road in the South Ward. Petition of Mr. James D. Palumba and Mr. Richard A. Anderson, recommended by Public Works Committee. This is a public hearing. Is there anyone in the council chamber who wishes to be heard on this proposed street closing? Seeing no one, I declare the public hearing closed. And I recognize the chairman of the Public Works Committee, Mr. Bessie. I believe this is, uh, uh, I'm sorry, this is Z6? Uh, yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, I believe this is in the South Ward. South um, Ward. Uh, Mr. Larson. Yes, I've heard. I've heard no comments at all uh, on this matter, and I move approval. Second. Second. All right. In discussion. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any opposed? Black sign. That's unanimous. Thank you. Now, item Z seven. Item Z7, resolution requesting the Forsyth County Board of Equalization and Review evaluate the 2017 tax reappraisal process. Councilmember Montgomery asked this item to be uh, brought forward. I would recognize him at this time for comments. Comments? Yes, please. Um, uh, requesting that council um, approve this resolution, which uh, would in essence uh, make the request to uh, the Board of Equal Equalization and Review uh, to take a deeper look um, and examination of how uh, the evaluate reevaluation process actually takes place and some of the negative impacts we've seen in, in certain areas that have been consistent uh, with what took place in 2013. Although the majority of properties in the county rose in value, there are certain neighborhoods and communities where the actual reappraisal process is much more challenging. I actually met this afternoon with uh, Mr. Burgess and uh, one of his directors and staff, and we had continued dialogue in reference to this. Um, and at the time, he did not object to uh, this going forward, but he did make a, a, a request that if we do pass this resolution to continue to ask uh, citizens to put in appeals 
because if the Board of Equalization takes a review, they will oftentimes take a look at those properties that have made the appeals to help in that process for them to actually get a good understanding of what has taken place. So regardless of the passage of this resolution, they still would like uh, for citizens, if they so desire, to offer those appeals so that it gives the board um, some substance to be able to have real uh, properties to take the examination for. All right, if you're prepared, go ahead and make a motion, uh, Councilman. With I move approval. Second. Second. Discussion? Councilman McIntosh. Yeah, I, I mean, I understand where this is coming from, um, but having been involved in the real estate business and having been involved with appraisals and, and, and valuing property for 30 some years, I don't think we're going to see much of a change based on a, a, a difference in methodology. Um, I'm, I'm happy to hear that the county is willing to look at it, um, but I don't want to get anybody's hopes up about there being major significant rises in value based on the difference in, in appraisal methods so an income approach versus a market approach because they typically end up coming to the same conclusion but um, but, I'm, but I'm happy to hear the county is willing to look at it yes, Burke. well that's I feel we must continue and I do thank the council person for moving forward with this <coughs> because we're being affected in the eastern part of the city more than anyone else and to have our properties lowered like they have been lowered uh, and continue so it must be our challenge to them to make sure council member that we are stay alert and that we make sure the residents from the area will stay alert and have the various meetings to continue to let them know that we value our property and we don't like what we are receiving Councilman Clark yeah I will be happy to support this although I wish it had gone through a committee there's some hearsay in here which I, I do have a little concern with for example it says whereas it appears that some properties after minimal enhancements are being rented by investment owners to tenants for higher amounts well we were given no empirical evidence of that and the other things in here but I, I think that the gist of it is we would like for the the county to look at the overall approach and I do think mr. Montgomery made a very valid point that the way the uh, review board is set up is they review specific requests and this is really a request for the entire county or the county city at least uh, so I would certainly urge folks that are concerned about their particular properties to uh, act accordingly thank you and the reason we had to bring it forward quickly is because the uh, board is getting ready to meet and yeah, want to get that. this in front of them there yes yeah. Adams. yes a uh, comment uh, again thank you councilman Montgomery for doing this and for the listening audiences and others there's always an opportunity to change. There's always an opportunity to make a process better. And the way we work in, 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 in processes or government or business or anything else, times change, people change, and that means we need, just like we're doing with our ordinances, we go back and look at them, tweak them, see where we need to bring them up to date to be compliant. I feel like this is an opportunity, whether they accept it or look at it, but it lets, and it's not saying, as council member said, we're not gonna stop. There is a different, there needs to be a different metric used to be able to evaluate the properties of the urban core versus the properties that are selling for 160, 70,000 and up in the city, you know? So if the prices are going up there, you know, maybe you do this blanket thing for that, but when you come into our communities, I think we may need to look at a two-pronged process, and I'm hoping the county is willing to do it, and I'm hoping maybe, maybe, we can get the state, uh, our legislators to look at it too, because Winston is not the only, in Forsyth County, only city suffering from this. When I travel across the state, listening to other mayors and council members with the League of Municipalities, they are talking about the same issue in the small, poor towns, whereas they are having just as much uh, issue with it as we are. So again, thank you, Council Member Montgomery, for thinking forward and bringing that to us. Council Member Larson asked to be heard, and then Council Member Burke, and then I'll come back to you, Council Member Montgomery. Uh, nobody likes to see the property uh, devalued, or at least apparently devalued based on taxes. Um, you know, we had a tough last appraisal with a, a number of properties were devalued across the city. We're seeing some of that again this year, uh, and it's very demoralizing, I realize, for people to have to confront that when their home is probably one of the most important investments that they have. 
uh, in you know in that they've made. Um, I applaud uh, the work of Councilman Montgomery's uh, bringing up a citywide issue uh, that will impact all the wards and do it in a comprehensive way. It's really the only way to do it when you have that many properties affected. Uh, individuals just don't have the stamina to, to take it in front of the Board of Adjustments and, and, and deal with it. So I, I think this approach, and I'm, I'm also very pleased that uh, the tax office, John Burgess, uh, is willing to reevaluate and look at that, and I'm optimistic. These things affect uh, our income as a city. Uh, also, when you start devaluating properties, that means tax revenues are less, uh, less money for the city to have uh, to spend on, on projects that we value, particularly for services to provide the city. So everybody loses on this, and I hope we'll find a better way to, to do it. Thank you. Yes, I had the opportunity to invite Councilman Larson the eastern part of the city and we went through the neighborhood and we have beautiful homes in the eastern part of this neighborhood of this city and I think it is a disgrace and a shame that we allowed investors to come through and assault our neighborhoods like they have in fact I said to the city manager uh, gave him some addresses and I emailed him and I said I just want you to go and look Look at the joy and the pleasure we have in keeping our neighborhoods through the years as elderly seniors. And we have made elderly citizens, and we have made big investments, and we have contributed to the city of winston salem in a very positive way. Homes are simply beautiful. Simply beautiful. Yards, we spend many dollars. Mine looks like a golf course. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. We spend that. You've seen it. Mm -hmm. um, and we worked hard. And I think it is not right for us, even though we may not go forward with it, but we are not going to sit still, Mr. Montgomery. And we are saying to you, you take that leadership and you hear what's being said on this council that we support it. And we will be there to let the Board of Equalization know that we are not pleased, we are not satisfied. And I thank you again for your efforts. Mr. Montgomery. Uh, just a few closing <coughs> remarks, just knowing that there will be some additional thoughts on, the, on this process. One, as the mayor mentioned, the reason of trying to push this forward was because of the timing of, of the board's meeting um, and uh, bringing this forward so that we can uh, get um, some, some action reviewed by the board and their, their timing. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, is that um, there is data and information that uh, uh, the tax office has received in reference to rents uh, within communities that they have actually uh, actual data for them to review. Um, and there are some concerns, and then there are also in terms of what was shared this afternoon were some things that make me optimistic about the future, and then also in terms of system changes and things that uh, the office is doing. And I, again, I, I must say very clearly that I think Mr. Burgess and his office have been intentional of trying to engage, and as I mentioned before, I think that the problem that exists is with what the current standards are, because I think the standards are being followed, but the standards as they exist now uh, seem to be problematic for certain parts of our community. I don't think that is any different from what's reviewing times when uh, communities and, and, and industries use redlining in certain neighborhoods and community. That was a standard that was used, and until it was challenged, then then was it overturned and, and saw it uh, to be um, uh, new methodologies used in how, um, how, how the process was done. And I think that's the same thing here. If we are successful, which as, as Councilmember McIntosh uh, pacifies that and say, well, just caution ourselves in that sense, but I think that that is true. This first go around may not yield the intention that many may want, but I think that we have to do a whole lot more to press it because I think it will require system changes, not just here in, in this city, but require system changes in order to get to the point that we have. Um, I, I will not share a specific neighborhood, but I would say the neighborhood I live in because uh, this information was shared uh, to the extent that it's proprietary in terms of rent. That in the neighborhood which I live in, even now, you have individuals renting homes that range from 750, 850, 500, 700, 675, 725 in ranges of rent rates as it exists now, and that's not even a part of, of a consideration because they have to back end it on what sales actually are. And so those things don't get to be considered in reference to what we think about in the evaluate the revaluation process, as well as another property in the neighborhood and community that was valued at $113,000. Now today is, is tax value is at $75,000. Uh, 
because of the grade that the property received was the same grade that the entire community received and it did not take into consideration that this property did not fit the same characteristics and character of the rest of the neighborhood. So I'm saying that to say that in, in, in these neighborhoods, we, there are things that we have to do and we have to look at, but what the process currently does is that it puts the burden on the property owner to have to reject what they receive and I think that it should be the other way around. We should have much more dependability on what we receive. And the problem is, is that the office states that at this moment, that the tax value is as close to market value as it will be during the evaluation process. And if that's the case, then this should be problematic to individuals and community. And the last thing I'll say is that one thing that was offered that we can do as a city, and I'd ask the city manager to take a look at it as well, is that when we make investments such as the TURN program, for us to make sure that we are conveying more information to the tax office on the actual work that our community and business development offices are, are doing in these neighborhoods. Because what was stated by Mr. Burgess is that sometimes, and not just some, most oftentimes, if there is not permits pulled for some of the work and investment we're making, we're not seeing the bang for our buck in terms of what's happening in terms of the upgrades we're making. So a new roof put on a house may not require a permit to be pulled, but that is value added in neighborhoods. And those are things that we can do uh, to make sure that the investments we're making are also having the lifting effect that we want on neighborhoods and communities. Thank you. Yes, Brooke had a comment. Earlier today, we mentioned West 25th Street and Arbor Road. West 25th Street should never have been West 25th Street. It should have been Arbor Road all the way. Or either it should have been West 25th Street up to, is that country, what's that street? Kent. Kent. Yes. But they did that. And this shows you that they do have ways of evaluating. And of course the properties on Arbor Road more expensive than those on West 25th Street. But people have made big investments and they are nice pieces of property. Also, I look at how some investors have come into the area. I was told when I got here, uh, came to this city, that R.J. Reynolds, the area of Cameron, the 14th Street, he was the architect for those homes where his employees live. Then the same homes you see there, you go to Ardmore, they look the same. But the investors have come in and destroyed some of those homes. They do anything to your yards. They let, they throw, and they dump anything they want to. That's why my challenge to the chairman of the community development, which I introduced that name for that committee and house general committee, for you to bring everything you possibly can. We're not talking about it's a great deal in tearing houses down. There are still very nice homes east of 52. That's why I said city manager always go over there and make sure he keeps up with what's going on, that these absentee people will stop destroying our dreams. All right. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. That's unanimous. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Customer Bessie. I'm sorry. Um, Mr. Norby reminded me that uh, planning staff is also going to be working on uh, the request of some of us um, uh, on a language change dealing with the impact of campus. Uh, zoning uh, uses addressing nearby properties. If, if we could get a quick summary of yeah. what they'll be working Mr. on. Norby. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. At, during the discussion of this uh, zoning case involving uh, Baptist Hospital, the, the subject was raised first at the planning board uh, and also by neighborhood residents and also kind of uh, translated over to uh, a number of council members about the way the UDO handles limited campus uses. and. Currently, we have a number of institutions in the city that are zoned campus. Uh, uh, not only Baptist Hospital, Forsyth Medical, Winston-Salem State, Salem College, UNC School of the Arts, and Wake Forest. So they're scattered around the city, all zoned campus zoning. The UDO allows for a radius of 500 feet around the campus zoning for certain smaller scale uses that are related to that institution to kind of sp spread into uh, structures that are that are there regardless of the zoning including residential zoning districts so the discussion uh, was was more of a concern that these kind of things can when you're looking at zoning of an area and you see your area zone residential if you're next to a if you're near a campus within 500 feet that may not mean that residential is the only use that can be there 
it may actually be some office or institutional uses of a lighter nature. So the discussion uh, focused on what could we do to fine tune the limited campus use where it would occur around there to put some more controls on it. And so what we were asked to do is look at uh, doing a revision that would require a council issued special use permit for these types of uses that would occur within that 500 foot radius around campus uh, zoning. And in, in that way there would be at least some public notification when those, uh, when those types of uses were taking place and some review process to see whether it was compatible with the, uh, with the residential that might be there. So that, that's what we were asked to work on. So you're working on that and they'll be coming back to the council at some point? Yes. All right, very good. Thank you, Mr. Bessie. Council members, we do have a need to go into closed session and I would recognize Council Member Taylor. Before we go yeah, ahead, ask the city manager, but you just addressed by all of us uh, with this. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Mm -hmm. uh, for the last year or so uh, that we have been, our IT department along with the city secretary's office have been working uh, to do something that you and many council members have asked. You've been asking for many years for us to reduce the use of paper and to go to an automated system. So this, this is our first month with uh, using iPads for an automated automated agenda so we don't have to print all those books and chop down all those trees. And in a few months, we'll actually be voting with our iPads as well. Thank you. That's more Taylor. <coughs> Mayor, members of the council, I move that the city council go into closed session pursuant to General Statute 143-318. A1, to prevent the disclosure of personnel information considered confidential pursuant to General Statute 160A-168 and to General Statute 143-318, A3, to consult with and provide instructions to the city attorney and to preserve the attorney-client privilege. All for the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, no. We'll go into closed session. Thank you.
there a motion to end closed session? So second. Motion by Councilmember Rebessi, second by Councilmember Adams to end closed session. All in favor of the motions, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. We're out of closed session. Is there a motion to adjourn? I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion by Councilmember Taylor to adjourn, second by Councilmember Adams. All in favor of the motion to adjourn, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, no. We're adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>